in this video I get the real uh, robot base uh, going so I've got a, a Devastator tank base from DF robot that I'm going to use for the base uh, so I'll go through just show you the the build for that base uh, fairly quickly it might be uh, three or four minutes long uh, look at uh, running the base motor controller that I showed in the prototype uh, videos uh, some problems I had. Also have a look at one of the brackets I made uh, to hold uh, the connector that will connect the power from the base up to the Raspberry Pi controller. Yeah, I'll just quickly run through my build for the DF Robot uh, Devastated base. Um, following a lot of what was on Explaining Computers uh, video, I've got the link down in the description below. Uh, but uh, give you an idea of what it looks like. It took me about uh, two hours probably all up to, to build the base. At this point I made a couple of changes to the, what the plan said. Uh, so first, this one confused me, it said it should be one centimetre buffer between this M2 and the B4, which is the, the plate here. Uh, but I think it, they must have meant one millimetre, so I've reduced it to one millimetre. And looking at that uh, explaining computers video uh, the way he set this up looked like about one millimeter as well so I think it should be one millimeter there we'll find out and the other thing was I changed the motors so these are the motors that were on my my uh, test bench that I was using for the other videos and I want to use these because they've uh, got encoders on it as well as being 12 volt motors The motors that did come with it were Metal Gear, they're quite nice motors, uh, but they were 6 volt and didn't have encoders on them, uh, so this looked like a good way to get encoders on there. Otherwise I measured the distance between the mounting holes and the size of the of this here, and that all seemed the, the same. Uh, you can see some of my measurements here. So I think we should be good with using these, but we'll find out again when I connect up the motor controller. The only thing that really is different is these ones have a top speed of 131 rev per minute, whereas these motors that I got off Amazon have a top speed of 201 revs per minute. So it may just make the motor go, the robot go faster. 
Uh, but you can also get a version of these that are, uh, I think, 121 uh, rotations per minute. So I may have to swap that out with the encoder version that does 121 rotations per minute because I'd rather my robot goes slower than faster. So let's continue. We're going to add the wheels and the track and finish off putting this together. Built up now. So I've got some work to do to work out how to organize things inside there. This is the top that goes over the top. And I need to get some measurements, find out where and what sort of battery to fit in, but it'll probably be some sort of uh, LiPo battery go across there, uh, like 11.1 volts. And then I'll have a voltage converter to drop it down to 5 volt to power some of these things in the Raspberry Pi on top. But it looks like everything should fit, I think. I'll make a little tray there. So motor, motor controller, power, all on that layer. And on top, we have the Raspberry Pi up here and maybe a camera. And then I'll probably, when I get to doing uh, lighter, I'll make a little aluminium riser here so I can have lighter, maybe the camera up on top of that. I think that's everything I need to fit on this robot, so size should be okay. The only thing I'm worried about is the width here. This comes in at a at 135 and those LiPo batteries are about 138, which is going to be awkward, so I have to work out what sort of battery I can fit in here. Uh, maybe I can do it at a different angle, otherwise they'll go on top as well. Yeah, it's about a day later and a few 3D prints later. Uh, so uh, this is looking down on top of that robot base. Um, so I've added in the base motor control board that I made when I was prototyping. Uh, made a few changes to that and also uh, put together a little 3D uh, container for putting the LiPo battery in. So just going through what's in the base now. So on the 3D print here, I added uh, three power buses. So basically uh, screw in terminal blocks. So I've got three sets at the moment of four uh, terminals, uh, one for 12 volts, which will be coming from the LiPo battery or external, uh, five volts, which the five volt power supply here will generate and will be used by the Raspberry Pi and uh, by the Pi Pico. And then uh, a ground here. Uh, I've got room on here. I can uh, actually extend these power buses. I think for the ground, I may need a two or three more uh, terminals for the, the ground uh, connections, uh, but I'll see how it goes. But it's easy enough to drill some more holes and put some more connectors in there. I've got space between the five and the 12 volt blocks. I think I got enough for those two. Uh, you can see the Pi Pico here and also I've got room and there's a hole in the side of the robot base where I can get a USB connector in and you can see that it's connected at the moment. Uh, so this allows me to still have access to the the Pi Pico from uh, VS Code for doing updating any code on the Pi Pico. Otherwise uh, on this base motor controller, I changed things around a little bit. Um, I found the, the FT232 uh, UART, um, the USB connector for that was probably in the wrong orientation to be able to run a wire from that or a USB 
connector from that up to the uh, Pi Raspberry Pi that's going to be sitting on top of this. Uh, so coming out of here, uh, so I turn it around and have it facing the other direction. Uh, also, that's raised off the board, so it's about uh, probably uh, 20 millimeters higher than the board, so it gives room to again connect a small uh, USB connector in there. Uh, to do that, I had to reduce the height of the actual motor controller, which is here. Uh, to do that, um, instead of having it, the whole board plug in, I actually uh, change it where the connectors are just uh, connecting straight into the base board, so I can't plug or unplug it. Uh, I guess I'd have to desolder it if I want to do it now, but allowed it to be about uh, probably about 10 millimeters lower than it was before. And I had the pins for connecting to the actual motors now coming out uh, aligned with that board, so rather than sticking up. So it now gives me enough room where I can get that USB connector coming in here, connecting to the FT232, and still have the motor connectors in here. Um, I cleaned up some of the connectors, so uh, crimped up some connectors, so they got better uh, connectors here. Uh, got the colors all uh, reasonably uh, correct now so the same colors for each motor going to the right places uh, I'm not sure whether I've got the left and right motors all aligned with the right plugs but I can change that as I play around with it but uh, uh, I think this should uh, get most of the base done at least where I can close it up and then put the Raspberry Pi on top and start trying to drive it around but uh, at the moment I just want to try out the motors make sure that the tracks turn in the same direction or in the direction they're meant to maybe get an idea of uh, how many meters per second this is going to move at top speed and whether there's enough whether the motors have enough guts to actually turn it properly and maintain, manage the weight of this uh, this base I've got a couple of motors coming that are half the speed of these work, so I may swap over to these because, again, I don't really need this uh, track base to go high speed. And I think it's going to go fairly fast with uh, 200 uh, rotations per per minute uh, motors in there. So uh, depending on how fast this looks like it's going, I may change the motors out to the, the ones that go about half the, the speed at top speed. Okay, let's try this out. So I've connected up the 12 volt power supply. It's coming in here. And I also uh, connected a voltmeter just to see uh, how close to five volts the 12 volt to five volt uh, converters uh, running at and looks pretty close to five volts. So that'll work. And uh, down here, I'm connected up via the serial cable here, USB cable to the Pi Pico so I can give it commands. Base motor controller dot run. Let's try it. Sixty percent. Okay. Hard to see it in the movie, but the tracks are actually moving in opposite directions. So this tells me my motors are connected up wrong. I've probably got the polarity around wrong. So uh, let me swap that around and then uh, try it again. <laughs> so I realised what I was doing wrong. Uh, so, different from my test bench, the motors are facing opposite directions. Uh, so they, to go forward, they need to go opposite uh, directions, uh, which was different from the way I'd set things up on my test bench. And you can see here when I run it now, I just flip the the polarity on one of the motors here at the moment, and. Let's, See, there's some uh, some bad changes of of speed on the motor, and I think that's because my speed uh, adjustments in the routine were assuming that the motors were both going in the same direction. So I'm going to have to jump back into the code and uh, adjust for that as well. I probably won't do it on this video. I'll, I'll take me a little while to get that re retuned. So I'll have a look at that in the next video. But at least now I know why the motors go in opposite directions is because they're facing opposite uh, directions in the robot base. 
So I got a, a USB-C uh, breakout adapter. Uh, I need this to power the uh, Raspberry Pi, which uses USB-C uh, from my 5-volt uh, uh, power inside the robot. Uh, however, the end of it, I need a little bracket to hold it onto the, the top of the robot base. And this is what I designed here. So uh, I'll put the plans as a link in the YouTube description, uh, but just used Fusion 3D and then uh, printed it out on my 3D printer. And we can see it here. And it seemed to work okay for holding in the, in the adapter.